So uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us at this uh, ICAM Foundation webinar. Um, I'm your host, Daniel. Joined with me is my colleague, Alex. Hi, everyone. Um, so this, uh, this foundation webinar, we'll be discussing about macro programming. Um, we'll start with a brief introduction on the macro language. Following that, we'll be giving some tips on string formatting, and then we'll give you an introduction uh, on the user-defined syntax macro. Uh, the next webinar uh, will go a little more in depth in the user-defined syntax macro and with more concrete examples. So let's get started with the uh, ICAM macro language fundamentals. Uh, we'll start with uh, what is essentially um, the most the bread and butter of this uh, of campus is the use of APT instructions, um, and those you will find in your CL file, um, which are essentially one manufacturing instructions. So your load tool commands, your coolants, your feed rates, uh, your go-to motions, and your spindle speeds. Um, APT instructions are constructed with major words, um, which are your main instrument object, followed by a forward slash. Next to the forward slash can be a string or a mixture of numerical values and minor words. Um, for in this example, you have the spindle major word. Um, you'll see here that the weird spelling of spindle uh, miss, is missing an E, and that's because for historical reasons, um, the maximum limit of character is six, uh, and we're keeping that history, that history. Therefore, most, if not all, the major words uh, will have six characters. Um, one other example would be the feed rate. Instead of seeing the whole feed rate command, you'll see fed rat. Um, so going back to this example, uh, we have the spindle here, uh, seventy being their numerical value, and followed by two. RP, uh, followed by two minor words uh, that basically describes the spindle, so the RPM and the clockwise rotation, and it generates the uh, appropriate uh, tape file code, an S with the 70 value and the associated M code. Um, so the four, there are multiple applications for macro, but these are the four main applications for using or for writing macros. The first reason is to support um, app source syntax that is non-campos standard. What does that mean? That means there are probably syntax out there that we do not inherently support. Uh, for example, here, rotate slash C axis 90 um, is not a default standard campos uh, command. So you will most likely get an error, uh, a warning message saying that this syntax is incorrect or this command does not exist on the machine. Um, and to avoid that error, you would write a macro that could output a different command that's a little more standard, for, such as a go to or a move to command um, to generate the motion of your C axis. Uh, moving on, another uh, fee, another uh, way you could use macros is um, to output um, modifying standard commands. For example, a spindle off here I would generate the M5 code. Um, but if you do, if you needed the coolant to be turned off before, um, then you would write a custom macro because there's no feature default in the questionnaire that can do that. So you would write a custom macro to output the M9 before the M5. Uh, a third uh, feature that you a third method you could use macros is to support non non standard features or functions such as probing, and finally um, there are some outputs to the tape that are um, that can't be done through the questionnaire. For example, splitting your x y z motion all the time um, under certain conditions or under certain logic. Well, you could create a macro that whenever that condition is met to split your motion. Um, so here's just an overview of the macro processing order. Um, it always starts from the app source or your CL file. Um, every block or every command will go through this logic up until it goes to the tape file. Um, so you can see here we have the custom macros section where you know you can have a lot of different macros and then if the code has a standard behavior it would go through the questionnaire 
do its thing and then output to the tape file. Um, so let's get started with the macro language. So Campos macro language is similar to mo programming language uh, where it uses the following data types. So it has the variables, it has functions, it has a different branching control such as if loop, uh, if statements and case statements. And it also has looping control, your while loops, your do loops. So we'll start with the macro data types. Um, Campos supports a handful of macro data types, such as reals, uh, could be both negative and positive, can have decimal places, I mean, can have strings, uh, a lot of uh, any character strings. You can have your logical or your bullies statements. Um, you can have your you have your records and your keywords, which are synonymous to major and minor words. And finally, you can have uh, a sequence, which is an a set of data, uh, which can be composed of any of the other macro data types. So you can have a sequence with um, with records inside and reals, you can mix and match, you can have strings and logical statements, or you could have a blank sequence. And sequences are defined using those squiggly brackets. Uh, we also support different variable types, um, such as your user-defined variables. Those are variables that you, you would declare yourself, you would give them your name. Uh, we also have what we call predefined global variables, which can be used in the global scope. Um, and those are helpful to you to transfer information between your macros or you want to transfer values between your macros. Um, that can be done using a predefined global variables. Uh, those, are those are shown with the uh, ampersand sign and G numbered 1 to 99. Uh, you also have the predefined local variables, which in the contrary of global variables are only used in the local scope of your macro. Uh, and again, same same idea there, you have um, using the ampersand L from 1 to 99. Um, the do we'll, for the dollar P arguments, um, we'll talk about those later, but essentially those are to help you capture uh, values or words um, on user-defined syntax. Uh, finally, you also have the system variables, which are there, which are information given by the post processor um, for you to use, such as your the pi value using dollar P, uh, $PI, sorry, and then $T for the tool number. Uh, the declaration macro uh, is used to declare your global variables. Um, those are, are a must. You must declare your global variables in the declaration macro. Um, you can also declare your local variables, uh, which is a good practice to do, uh, but essentially those are not uh, mandatory. Only global variables uh, must be declared. Um, if you look at the bottom example here, we're declaring a global variable of data type real with the name tool used, and we're declaring it with an array of 50 to store um, real numbers inside that table. Uh, system variables, um, again, are used to generate, uh, are given to you with some information generated by the post processor. Uh, some are read only, some are read and write. Um, those are for you to use them. This is just a short list of the available ones. If you want the full list, you can look at the post 230 PDF document within with your installation folder. Um, like every operator, uh, pretty standard here with the numerical operator, you have your additions, your subtraction, your multiplication, your divisions. Same thing with the assignment operators, you have your equals, or your addition and your subtraction assignments. For logical Boolean operators, uh, we have two methods, uh, either the NC, uh, the NC syntax or the C syntax. Both syntax can be mix and match um, within the same macro or even within the same post processor. Um, by default, the NC is used, um, but you can program everything in C and do note that when you hit OK and exit that macro and come back, the post will automatically convert to whatever language is set by default, which is uh, NC. And finally, we have the functions, which are always prefixed with the dollar $F. Uh, and again, these are there for you to use um, to avoid writing long macros. Uh, and a list can also be found on the POST230 document um, with your installation folder.
Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. So I'm gonna take over for the string formatting. So in the ICAM macro language, you can uh, format uh, your st uh, string to appear the way you want them to appear for a t uh, message to the operator that needs to be put on the, uh, on the tape file. If that message is not always the same, but you need to put a specific value that would be taken from the post to either have your tool list uh, prepared by the, uh, for the operator or to modify the setup uh, during uh, the machining, et cetera. So we can, and we have numeric formats, string formats, the minor and logical formats, and also have a wildcard to be able to catch anything. Then finally, we will go over the register formats on how to use them. For numeric formats, first and foremost, for every uh, string formatting inside of ICAM, the string format will start with an exclamation mark followed by parentheses. Then afterwards, inside of parentheses, you will have what we call the string de uh, descriptor, which is the format of your uh, of how that numbers or uh, character is going to look like. For numbers, we do have some special codes uh, for here. Uh, uh, for numbers, here an example. Uh, we can't specify the amount of digits before uh, the digits before and after decimal place. If uh, do I want to have a uh, decimal, a, a dot for decimals or not? Some controllers will do the separation on the numbers based on what uh, the amount of numbers present for very old controllers, or have the, uh, the dot, or do I want that dot just to be when I have a fractional number. I can have up to nine digits on both sides of decimals. And I can also, if I want, decide to suppress uh, the zero uh, that would fall right before the, uh, the decimal or the extra zero that I have at the end of the, uh, of the number. So those are the kind of things you can, uh, you can do with the, string, uh, the numeric formatting. If you look at the bottom, we have uh, some examples of uh, numbers with different uh, string descriptor and how they're going to look like inside of, uh, inside of the uh, string. For string formatting, all the, the other will have a letter assigned at the beginning of the string formatting to tell the post which, uh, what kind of formatting it is. For string formatting, you can have either capital A or lowercase a. Uh, and then it will be followed or not by a number from 0 to 999. That number, if present, will, uh, will either truncate the uh, variable used for that string formatting if, that, uh, if the number is uh, lower than the amount of character inside of the variable, or add extra space at the end of the uh, variable if that variable has less character than the number specified, as we can see on example uh, three and four at the bottom. If you have a capital A, it's going to take the variable uh, as is. And if you have a lowercase a, you will have all your character inside of that variable as a lowercase character. For minor words, the only uh, letter you're going to use is the M letter. And you have for the logical, the L letter. And again, you can use specify the amount of uh, uh, ca character you want to use for that variable. Then you have the tab for, uh, format. The tab is to put your, uh, the output of your variable at a specific uh, column uh, in, on the line. So for this example, if we have a uh, T16, that means we want to put the dollar TL name at the 16 column on the line. However, you can either put a capital T or lowercase t and the post will behave differently depending if you have that capital or lowercase. If you have the, the, the capital T as it is right now, it's going to go to the 16 position. Look if there's already on the buffer a character implemented that uh, there. If it, uh, you do have a character, it's going to go to the next column 
that has a uh, empty uh, that doesn't have any character assigned to it and input that variable starting from that position. Compared to the uh, lowercase t, it's going to go to that 16th position and start writing that variable uh, to the buffer. And if there's any character in the way of that, those characters will be overwritten. Then finally, we have the wildcard where you would use the star uh, character. This, is, uh, this may uh, catch any type of arguments, be it numeric, minor, string format, and logical with their default uh, formatting rules. So for minor text, uh, text string and logical, those are set as take the full uh, variable uh, amount of character. And for numeric, it's uh, you suppress the zeros, you have a decimal only if the, uh, if the number is fractional, and you have nine digits, up to nine digits on both sides of, uh, of the format. Finally, we will talk a little bit about the string registers format. So you can use the uh, certain uh, uh, registers already inside of your uh, register, register window to output, either add them to, the, uh, to your variable to have the, for example, x and then followed by a value, or to use that, uh, the value already stored inside of the register at the current moment of the post. The way you would do that, you would call with your exclamation mark parentheses, followed by an at number, uh, a at, and either a number or a letter uh, for the registers. Please note that you cannot use any register, uh, every registers on the window. If you want to uh, to see what uh, what is the list available, you can look inside of documentation uh, uh, name post two three zero. PDF and located in your installation folder. You can also inquest, uh, write down exclamation mark parentheses and press F1 to bring the uh, help menu to return to register. So you can use either the register uh, index, so the number, the position uh, on which line the register you want to use is set. However, if you do move those, uh, those registers or that you create a new one, that index will change and you will have to go back manually inside of the macro to modify that. Uh, Campos will not modify automatically your macro to fit the register you are uh, looking for. A simpler way of doing it would be to use the register letter instead of using the uh, index. So if you use the at x, it will take the x register. So that way, per, uh, whatever the uh, position of that register in the list, it will find it and use the correct register. If you want to use the numeric value already assigned to the register, you would use the same format but without parentheses. So only at exclamation mark. Uh, exclamation mark at x. So if we look at the examples, those are three way of writing the same, uh, the same output. All right, so thank you, Alex. Um, so we'll finish up this uh, webinar from, uh, with an introduction to user-defined syntax macros. Um, so let us start with discussing about more in-depth look at the processing order. Where it starts from the app source or your CL file and it ends at the output to the tape file, um, and in between you have all your your macros that come come from the kit, your custom macros, um, your startup and shutdown procedures, or it can ha it can be in a register macro or a tape macro, and all those in all in each of these steps you can have a macro that will impact what was the input that could influence the output. Uh, one interesting note here is um, macro processing is happening as you post process. It's not an afterthought. It's it happens as you process uh, as you post process um, your CL file, um, and so at every step of the way, you know exactly where you are in your macro um, by stepping in. Um, 
using your keyboards or some of the features, some of the buttons inside of Jenner to look through each and every macro. Um, so for example here, we, if we stop at the spindle um, command here, uh, we can go into the user-defined syntax macro. We see here that we have some kind of um, uh, extra command to display a message, uh, to display the spindle value. Uh, and then, you know, if you look at the tape there at the output, we do have the spindle value output. Uh, and obviously we have there the output so that we can keep the process going so that we process that spindle command. Um, it goes through the questionnaire, um, the questionnaire does its thing, and there goes your output with the S100 and the M code associated to the uh, rotation direction. And so that's just a quick idea of, you know, from your CL file to the output, what's happening in between. Um, so let's see how we can add or create those user-defined syntax macro. So looking from Quest uh, on your menu there, you have a little book there with the user-defined syntax macro. Click on that, you can add, and then an extra, an additional window will output where you can input the major word. Um, it has a self-complete, so you can start typing the beginning of the major word and it will automatically recognize what you, or it thinks what you want to uh, write. If you try to put a major word that does not exist, it will not let you create that uh, user-defined syntax line. And if it does exist, then you will open, uh, an additional editor will open up. Um, and that line is called the syntax definition line, which is the matching line. It's the line that will match to your CL command in the app source. Um, so for example, here we're creating one that looks for coolant. Uh, we're catching two different values, which we'll explain shortly. And then you have the rest, which is the body. The body containing different actions, different statements, different uh, loops, uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, bodies can be empty if you decide to not process that specific command. Um, so here we're continuing on with the, the SDL here. Um, so obviously it is composed of the major word here at the front uh, and then followed by the forward slash and you can have different arguments. Um, the arguments come in three different forms. You have the argument with no, uh, with no parentheses or brackets. That is to define the, uh, a, a mandatory argument that means the argument is required for the matching. Um, similarly, you have the parentheses options, which uh, is used to group two arguments together, and they are also mandatory, so they must come as a pair or you know more than one uh, argument, the, no matter how many arguments you have inside those parentheses. And finally, you have the optional arguments, which are in brackets. Again, you can have multiple ones inside if you if those um, uh, optional arguments want uh, are in pair or comes in groups um, one thing to note here is the the orders matter so if you have argument one in this case for which is mandatory at the beginning then it must appear as the first argument uh, similarly for the parentheses um, when you have things in brackets those are optional uh, and the bracket the whole bracketed argument may or may not appear and the um, if you have, let's say, two brackets, uh, two bracketed arguments, then those two can be interchanged and uh, the order uh, does not matter. Uh, one thing to note here is some SDLs do not have any arguments, such as your rapids and your go-homes. Um, those do not have uh, any arguments as, um, as mono. Yeah, those simply do not have arguments. Moving on here, the SDL, going back onto that, those dollar $P variables, um, they're there to help you match anything or match some minor words, uh, some values or some words. For example, this feed rate, um, the value of your feed rate may change depending on you know, your different operations. Uh, for you to, to, to catch them, um, well, we're giving you these dollar $P arguments and they're defined in the table below. So you can catch different uh, numbers, you can catch minor words, you can catch a list of minor words, um, you can catch strings. And most interestingly enough, we have the wild card um, character, which is the star, where it can catch either no uh, zero argument or almost any 
amount of argument. It'll basically catch everything and store them inside of a sequence. Um, if it doesn't catch anything, then it will just have an empty sequence. Um, you could also just simply use a star if you, whatever you're catching isn't necessary to you. You can just use a star and that will basically do the same thing as just matching anything. Uh, so here's a quick example. For example, we have this spindle command here, which has $P1 um, argument, which catches numbers, and a $P2, which catches the minor words either clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, and then for that sample tape file here, um, we'll see which ones uh, will be uh, will be caught. Um, for you that want to try this later on, we will be providing this um, in a PDF document so you can revise it later. Um, but just quickly here, if you go through these, you can see that only two of them will be caught and that's because the order of the, of the arguments actually matter. So for example, the second one or, or the third one here, even though we're catching the right arguments because the order is not respected, it will not um, fire that macro. And we can see that later on, uh, we'll have a quick uh, example. Uh, another quick tip here is uh, how to write a correct, uh, an SDL, a quick, I guess, uh, our strategy to writing a SDL here. Um, for example, we have these couple load tool statements. They have their arguments that come with it. One strategy we do is you can tabulate all the possible uh, load tool commands and kind of split them up um, nicely. And so you can see things that are important, things that are not important, or rather arguments that are important, arguments that are not important. Uh, you can also note in this table arguments that come in a pair. For example, the O set no here are all, is always followed by a number, or length is always followed by a number. Um, you know, th using this strategy, you know what is what are the important arguments to catch, and what are arguments that uh, may or may not appear. Um, so going through, we get an SDL where dollar P one we're catching the uh, the tool number, and then everything else is in brackets because it's um, in some cases they appear, in some other cases they don't appear, and for things like the O set no. Um, they're in a pair with a dollar p2 or a dollar p3 to catch the value of um, of that argument. Um, so that's a nice way of um, kind of writing an SDL to capture as many cases as possible. Uh, moving on, we have the the output command. So the output command is used by Jenner to process the uh, that SDL line as is. So for example, here we're catching spindle on. If we say output, it will just output the spindle on. Um, if you were to have dollar $P arguments associated to that CL, uh, to that SDL line, output will not uh, output the modifications of those dollar $P arguments. So if you were to change, uh, let's say that spindle, you wanna change that spindle value uh, and you put say output, well, if you change that dollar $P value, the output would not uh, adjust to that change. Uh, so the second method to write the macro is just to recall uh, the command itself. One note here is uh, macros are not recursive. So calling spindle slash on will not call itself over and over again. Uh, so looking at that quick example here, we have spindle, uh, spindle RPM, $P1 and $P2. So we're catching the spindle commands uh, with RPM at the front, dollar $P1 for catching a value, dollar $P2 being a counterclockwise or clockwise. And now here we have one of our branching loops, the if statement. So we're, we're checking if the, the value of dollar $P1 is less or equal uh, than one of the system variables for the maximum RPM. If, if it's true, then we just simply output that, that spindle command. Otherwise, if it's not true, then we're forcing out the maximum RPM using that second method. Um, doing this could be to you know, adapt your machines to different, uh, maybe to, uh, to adapt your posts to different machines or just to simply avoid having the error message uh, output if ever you go above that maximum RPM set in the post processor. And finally, here we have the Termac 
uh, command, the term macro as its name stands for is to terminate a macro. Um, these are always at the end of a macro by default, so you do not need to code that in. Um, but if you do want to code it in somewhere in between, it will uh, every time it steps into a term act, it will get off. The, uh, it will leave the whole macro. Um, you can have this in both your user defined macros, or you can use it in your startup and shutdown procedures. Uh, for an example, here we have a probe on or off. Uh, we're using the dollar f match to match strings. Dollar tl tab here is a tooling table with the twentieth parameter being um, the tool name. Uh, followed by the tool ID that we're looking at. And we're checking if that tool name has the word probe in it. If it returns blank, which means fmatch did not find the word probe, uh, then we terminate the macro. Otherwise, we do some other logic to turn on or off the probing macro. Uh, so that's a way of uh, getting out of macros if a certain logic is achieved. Uh, so let us go through a quick example here. Um, so we have here a, a sample tape file. Now this tape file was, uh, was obviously written by hand, so it it's, doesn't make any sense here. We, we will never have six or seven spindle commands here. Um, but just to get some of the macro ideas in mind. Uh, so if we run through this uh, macro here, we'll see that. Uh, let's disable this macro here. Right, so if we go, run back to macro and we go back to those um, spindle commands here that we've shown before. Um, so again, if we look back at that same example, we're catching spindle RPM a value and clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, so if we're stepping through these, um, you see that most of these will not catch because the order is important. So for example, this one does not respect the order, so we do not step inside. Same thing with this, right? Whereas, for example, this one, because we're only catching three clockwise or 3,000, if we go through that uh, PowerPoint again, uh, then we will, be, we will go through that macro. But for example, spindle 3,000, because we're missing the clockwise or counterclockwise parameter, we will not step through. And you can use the F11 key or kind of the step into here to go through and see which one are being um, executed. But what I wanted to show you is um, on the spindle off command here, you see we're turning on this, uh, the coolant at one point, but when our spindle off uh, is output to the tape, we're not turning off the coolant. So one method is to create a macro on spindle off command to turn off the coolant. Yeah, so let's go into quest. Um, so here you see I have this spindle off macro a user defined macro. I will enable it, uh, but essentially we, we catch spindle off and all we're doing is calling a coolant off command. And then um, to output the code as is, I can either type out the code again or simply type in output. I hit compile okay. And now I can go, I can go back to Jenner, roll back. Put a breakpoint out on spindle off command just to see what's happening. And now when we're running through, we can step into the macro and see we're caught the spindle off. We're going to output the spindle, uh, the coolant command, and then we output the code. And now we have our M9 followed by an M5 and then the rest of the code. So that's just a, a quick and simple example of how to create your custom macros to kind of achieve uh, a certain goal. Uh, we got the first uh, uh, first question. Hello, folks. Daniel, this one, this one may look familiar for, from yesterday. How to ignore data element in a sequence so the default value remains? Uh, for example, more, more circle, uh, comma five, comma point zero one, comma x uh, z x plan, comma tanto, comma on. So there's different way you could do it. Uh, once you, uh, if you catch a uh, 
a variable. Uh, for example, you would have an SDL with the mode as your major word. And then you would catch your, uh, the rest of the parameters the way you want them. And that five and 0 0.01, you could put it as a dollar P argument to catch them and then afterwards force them to the value you want to have. If we go into the define syntax, you would create your syntax for mode. And then here, since we want to catch it on circle, or if it, it would be on other one, uh, the just to let you know, this is the command. Uh, let me just grab a uh, write down what's the uh, example we have. So we are looking for catching this specific this specific command and whatever the value we have here, or if we want to skip over them. Uh, if the command doesn't need to have it, you can do it uh, on a two way. So if you catch it, if it's those specific value, you could just mode circle, comma, CX plan, comma, tanto, comma, on. Or if it comes with mo uh, variable, uh, numbers that could change, could just have this like that. Reassign the numbers to whatever value you would want to go. So if you need to have one and you need to have uh, you need to have another number and then you just restate them. Like so. So you are reassigning the value to a specific uh, to a uh, default value, and then from there it will output the uh, the value you want to. Uh, another question that was asked: Are we planning to offer online course? Uh, I know this is something in the current situation. This is something that we are active uh, actively talking inside of the uh, of the uh, company, and this is something we are coming up with a plan to be able to make sure that everyone has access to or training uh, without having to, for us to move to your facility or you to come to ours so we can go on online courses. Uh, next question, as ICAM built-in macros for probing routine yet? Unfortunately, we do not have built-in macros for probing since uh, from one controller to another to the, uh, the probing brand, the probe brand, they all have their different uh, way of doing the probing, uh, the probing output for those cycles. So unfortunately, we do not have any probing routines already built in inside of the uh, camp post. So we have another question following on the online courses. Uh, do we need to follow a beginner's course before the macro course? Uh, will you offer a beginner course online? We do offer a beginner's course, it's called a uh, basic training course where we go over the full interface of Quest. And that also includes uh, macro programming. So today was a brief overview of what we go through inside of our BTC class for the macro part. But we have uh, more functionality that we go through like the, uh, some look aheads to be able to uh, adapt your post to what's upcoming. Uh, we have also, uh, we go over the procedures, the st startup and shutdown procedure, what the kind of uh, uh, rapid macro we have there, how to modify them. Obviously every section has also uh, examples that we go through that uh, the student can, uh, uh, work on and we are available to them at the time to answer any question and go over what the code they, uh, they wrote and give them feedback and uh, correction if necessary. So I have a question. How do you view pre-built ICAM macro logic to use as a baseline for RMD? Uh, so when you are in your user defined syntax macro, you can click on show RMD macros. 
and then all the RMD that you would have active inside of your shut, uh, startup and shutdown procedure, you can just double click on, uh, on that startup and everything will show up. If you have separated your custom macro uh, and your RMD, you will see uh, RMD ID number one, uh, depending on which one it was used. And if you have custom macro, I believe, uh, uh, do we have a custom macro on that post, uh, Daniel? Inside of this uh, startup and shutdown. Yes, uh, I think it is. Yeah, this one is a, no, those are all uh, RMDs. Okay, no, the first one, so disable live speed. So yeah, so we do, uh, we do show them with the, uh, with the different ID for you to follow. So all built-in RMDs that we have on the left-hand side, the action uh, list, you can put them on and afterwards, when you go inside of your user defined syntax macros, you can see them, edit them, and modify them the way you really want them to look. But uh, since we do not have any other question, uh, I would like personally to thank you uh, for coming today. And uh, if you have other questions, don't hesitate us. Uh, don't hesitate to send us an email uh, asking your question. We are always available uh, to you. And if you have any inquiry with the online courses, you can co contact us and we will be able to set up something with you. Uh, again, thank you. And with uh, the current situation, please remain safe and hope to see you next week for the second part of our uh, webinar. Yep. Thank you, everybody, uh, and have a great day.